2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi are a common phrase used in the networking world and even used to describe a feature when you're shopping for a new router. So what exactly is the difference between the two and which should you be using in your home network? I'll cover all of this and more in today's video. Hey everyone, it's Chris back again from homenetworkgeek.com where we talk about everything home networking. Now, if you enjoyed the video and you find it helpful in any way, I'd really appreciate it if you could drop it a like subscribe if you haven't already, and ring the bell to turn on notifications. Now let's jump straight in with what 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz even refers to. 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz simply refer to the frequency bands that a Wi-Fi router is able to transmit. Frequency is simply a number that is obtained when you divide the velocity of the wave by its wavelength. So the two factors that are considered when you compare 2.4 and five gigahertz frequencies are the velocity and the wavelength. This can all get a bit confusing. So essentially, the frequency has a big impact on the waves, both speed and coverage. The higher the frequency, the greater the speeds, but the less of the range. And the opposite applies to the lower frequency, slower speeds, but a greater range. 2.4 gigahertz offers slower speeds over a greater distance, whereas five gigahertz offers greater speeds, but over a shorter distance. So the two major differences between both frequencies are the speed and the range. Let's take a closer look at these and some of the other differences you'll find. Looking at the speed of a Wi-Fi signal, the frequency has a direct correlation. The higher the frequency, the faster the speeds and vice versa. If you decide to use the five gigahertz frequency band should your router support it, you'll likely find that your download and upload speeds are faster than if you were to use the 2.4 gigahertz band. Things like streaming video and downloading files need the best download speeds that you can possibly get. So you'll find that using the five gigahertz frequency band makes this a lot easier. Now, if you're using the 2.4 gigahertz frequency band, you may find that it's difficult to complete these tasks in a reasonable time. And you also may be limited to what you can actually do on your home network. Now, that being said, there are a few other factors to consider before you jump ship to the five gigahertz frequency band as it's not all sunshine and rainbows. The other major difference between the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz band is the range of the Wi-Fi signal itself. Don't get too caught up on the 5 gigahertz band offering greater speeds, as it does come at a cost. The 5 gigahertz frequency may be faster, but it does have a much shorter range. When the frequency is higher, not only will the range of the signal be lower, but it can also struggle to get through solid walls and other obstructions. The 2.4 gigahertz band is able to better cope with these obstructions and is one of the main reasons as to why a lot of people will choose to use 2.4 over 5 gigahertz. They're willing to accept the slower speeds for the better overall coverage throughout their entire home. Now, interference may not be as important as speed and range, but it's still worth considering weighing up, weighing up the pros and cons of using either 2.4 or 5 gigahertz bands. The interference that you may suffer is dependent on the number of channels that a particular frequency band is able to hold. Now the 2.4 gigahertz frequency band only has 11 channels available. Given that a lot of the devices that we use at home will only support 2.4 gigahertz, like smart home devices, for example, they tend to all end up on the same channel, which can cause interference. On the other hand, the five gigahertz band has more than double the number of channels available at 23. Fewer devices will operate on this band, which can result in less overcrowding and better performance, with the end result being less interference on the five gigahertz band. Now the cost to purchase a router that only supports the 2.4 gigahertz band is almost always going to be cheaper than one that supports the 5 gigahertz as well. Now, although it costs more, I would still recommend looking at a router that supports both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands, as not only does this give you more options as to which you can choose from, but it also future proofs yourself. So which should you choose, 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz? Now that you know the difference between both bands, it's time to decide which you should be using in your home network. Now, before I help you decide, it is worth remembering that if your device supports ethernet and it's not too awkward to cable, I would always recommend using a wide ethernet connection over Wi-Fi. This will generally offer lower latency, less interference, and provide greater speeds and overall performance. Now I do understand that not everyone is able to use ethernet. So let's carry on and talk about which frequency band you should be using when using Wi-Fi. Ask yourself the following questions and hopefully my answers will help you decide which is best for you. So what matters more to you, speed or coverage? If higher speeds are an absolute must for you and you're willing to accept that you're gonna have less coverage, 
go for the 5 gigahertz band. Now if overall range and coverage is more important to you, and again you're willing to accept slightly slower speeds, opt for the 2.4 gigahertz band. Another question to ask is whether your network is being shared at all. If only yourself and other members of your household are using the Wi-Fi, consider 5 gigahertz. Should you need to extend your network across multiple floors of a building, or perhaps you're wanting to share with the house next door, you'll probably want to consider using the 2.4 gigahertz band for its ability to provide not only better coverage, but penetrate walls and other obstructions. The third question to ask is whether your home has any solid walls. One thing to bear in mind is that if you live in an older house, you'll likely find that the walls are typically quite thick. So the 2.4 gigahertz band is better for its ability to go through these solid walls. Whereas in modern homes, the walls are much thinner. So you'll probably be all right getting away with using the five gigahertz band there. The fourth question to ask is how many of your devices use the 2.4 gigahertz frequency? If you have a large number of devices that are all operating on the 2.4 gigahertz band, you'll likely find that this becomes quite overcrowded and result in more interference. In this case, it's probably worth moving some of these devices over to the five gigahertz band to result in less interference and provide better performance. And just so you're aware, there are a few devices that are well known for causing interference on a Wi-Fi network, including garage door openers, baby monitors, and microwaves. Before deciding to make the switch to using the five gigahertz band, you need to first make sure that your current router actually supports it. Wi-Fi routers that are typically older and sometimes cheaper to buy will only support the 2.4 gigahertz band so in this case, that's what you'll be stuck with using. However, if your router is newer and does support dual bands, you'll probably find you see two actual antennas if they are external, with each antenna designed to operate on a 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz band respectively. If you're looking to upgrade your router or just check what your current router supports, you can easily find this by referring to the manual or checking for the model number online. When looking at the specifications, you wanna keep an eye out for 802.11a or 802.11ac, as this means that the router will support five gigahertz. If you only see 802.11b, g, or n, unfortunately, this means that the five gigahertz is not supported, so you'll be stuck with using the 2.4 gigahertz band. That being said, if you see 802.11n, this may mean you have the optional feature of supporting five gigahertz as well. Now, if you're in any doubt whatsoever, just contact the manufacturer of the router and they'll be able to easily tell you whether their product supports both frequencies or only 2.4 gigahertz. Now, before you go ahead and enable the five gigahertz band on your router, there's one more thing to consider, and that's the types of devices that you'll end up connecting to it, as these two must also support the five gigahertz frequency. Thankfully, most devices these days will support both, so you'll more than likely run into issues with the router not supporting it, than the devices themselves. There are a few checks that you can make though to make sure that your devices do support the five gigahertz band rather than you making the switch and then only finding out they don't connect. Firstly, you can check the technical specification of the device itself. Just like with the router, you can either check the manual that came with the product or refer to it online. Now, if you're using a Windows laptop that you think you wanna to connect to the five gigahertz band, you can check the network adapters in the device manager to find the wireless card that you're using. A quick search online will then tell you whether that particular card does support 5 gigahertz. You can also simply just test connecting a device to the 5 gigahertz band. If it connects and works, great, you know it's compatible. So that was an overview on both the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz frequency bands. I really hope I helped you decide which may be best for you and your home network. So if you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful in any way, I'd really appreciate it if you could drop it a like subscribe if you haven't already and ring the bell to turn on notifications. Also, if you haven't visited the site before, be sure to head on over to homenetworkgeek.com where I have a ton of articles on everything home networking. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.